Okay, so when you get your server, it'll probably have it looking a bit like this. So, well, yeah, so it'd probably look a bit like this when it comes, um, depending on where you buy it from. Um, the one I had did not have this, and I had to buy this separately. Um, but it had these mounting points here and stuff like that. And that was about it really, it doesn't, it doesn't really help anything else. So basically to remove all these kind of bits so you can get access, um, you can leave all these fans in here. These are just the standard ones, I've not changed these yet. And as you can see those are different because they're not well, as thick, obviously. Uh, these are all changed, so it's that. Um, if you want to change this fan, this just kind of, there's two bits here and you just push those in, pull it out. So we put it back in again. That fan just comes out. Um, but basically, you don't take any fans out in order to change anything. That's uh, one of the good things about this case. Um, so basically, to take this out, you just push these two in. Hope it falls out. So you've got your three fans there. You can see the difference, obviously. And these are the connectors in here. Now, now I'm not really quite very sure as to why there's another fan connector here. What is this for? I have no idea. So whatever it's for, it's obviously important. Um, might be some kind of intrusion detection thing, I'm not really sure. But basically that's there, so you just going to throw that to the side. Um, underneath there you've got your two CPU heat sinks. Uh, so this is CPU 1, this is CPU 2. Um, I'll just leave that for just now. Um, to take out this piece, this is two separate pieces, so there's a piece here, there's a piece there. Um, so to take this one out, you just lift this up. And then there's a little catch thing here. And push that up as well. And just pull it out, it slides out. So this is just your, your cable to cool your memory and push it basically push all the heat out the back pretty much. Um, it's a very direct heat flow design so it does cool everything quite well, although because this uses fully buffered DIMMs rather than your standard DDR2, it will get pretty hot, so you really want to be running your fans there. Um I wouldn't take these ones out. So take this bit out. You just push down this, pull it out. Very simple, very easy. These are all very easy to take out, and I like that. Burr. So, now that all that's out of the way, you can see the main components. So you've got CPUs, your Intel 5000X chipset. So that just allows you to, that's the memory controller and it also allows you to do dual processor. Um, you have a lot of expansion slots, you can just take that out there. So you've got, put this up so you can see it, oh, or not. You've got, oh my god this is heavy, um, four PCIe 4x slots, you've got two PCIe X slots, and there's another PCIe 8 times slot down there. Um, and I presume that this is some other chipset, presumably for I.O. I guess, I'm not really very sure. You've got two gigabit broadband chips here, and this little key thing here, this uh, tool key, if you take that out. It's basically just a hardware key that allows them um, to use the TCP offload engines on these. So. It just means that your CPUs aren't doing all the calculations for sending data on the gigabit. So basically, um, it reduces the load in your CPUs pretty much. Um, there's two gigabit ports you can use up to two um, two entire cores. So if you've got eight cores here, then 
you only got to have six. They're actually usable if you're having a lot of never traffic. Uh, moving over, we've got uh, a battery here, which is for our Perk 5i RAID card. Um, this is easily removable, you just pull this back and it comes out like that. The battery cable kind of slots around through this hole and just clips into the card. Very easy. Um, let's tilt this up again. Ugh. So this card here, this is an actual card. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to get this out by holding up the server. But I think you just pull these two apart and lift it out somehow. Ugh. A bit like that. So basically I just pulled the bar because they're clipping it in. Pull it out and if it will come out, there it is. Hear me. So what we got here is the Perk 5i. It's got a what looks like an ARM processor on it. This card is made by LSI Fordell for these servers. Now um, the one slight issue with these is that this um heat sink here is not very big and these things get pretty hot so you're going to want to make sure that you do have airflow. If you remove this fan here, you're going to have a massive issue with this overheating. Probably shut down or something. Um, this, as it looks like, is just a standard memory dim. Nothing special about that. So that's uh, 256 megabytes of RAM in that. And we've got two um, SAS connectors here, supporting up to four drives in each connector. So it's quite a beefy card. Um, I got this one for seventeen pounds off eBay, and it came on this mounting plate here. So I was in the, uh, pretty much just do that off and put it in my own server. Very simple. So I'll put this back in. So, another thing to take off these CPU socket things, coolers even. Get that focused. There we go. So, these are a very simple design. There's just two um, like levers here that hold it down, which are just pressed on it. So, you basically just push down this, slide it out to the right and lift up and that just comes up like that. Same on the other side. So just the opposite way around obviously. And you can just lift the heat sink off. I obviously think they are pretty dirty to be honest. I mean covered in dust and shit, so you're gonna to wanna to clean these before you before you do anything. It's got four heat pipes and what well, looks like an aluminium base. Yeah. These are aluminium fins as well on that. Um, you've got your, if I can open it, there you go mate, you got your 771 CPU socket here, so you've got 711 pins here, now I don't know if you can see this but there's two slightly bent pins here, I'm not sure whether they're, they look just twisted rather than bent, so I'm not sure whether this will actually work or not, but it will. If it doesn't work, then I've got the other socket, so that's fine. Um, it's not exactly the biggest problem in the world if it doesn't work. Uh, put this back in again. It will go in. It apparently won't, which is nice. Come on. Oh, that's why I'm going to put the lever for the CPU socket down, doesn't it? There we go. There we go. There we go. So just push those back down again and flip them in. There we go. That's the cooler back on. Um, now these servers are capable of dual power supplies, so just 
Zoom you out a bit. Yeah. Oh, they're so heavy as well, but it's a bit of a problem. No, you've got. Oh dear. Can I? Mm, this is not going to work, is it? <laughs> Let's just put it on the ground, that's probably easier. Let's just unscrew it. There we go. So, let's just move this junk out of the way. So down here we've got... We've got... Uh, This standard serial there, we've got VGA, four USB 2s, nothing special about those, two gigabit LAN ports, um, this is Dell's kind of weird flashy information light thing. It also looks like it has a, I'm not really sure what that is, but there's a socket for something there. I'm not sure, it just looks like a DC power jet to me, but okay. Um, probably some Dell weirdness or something, I don't know. And then we've got our power supply, which obviously just has its three pin kettle plug thing. Um, power light, um, attention light, and uh, like there's mains power thing, basically. So it's all very simple. We've got a nice big ventilation port here um, on the back. And there's another slot here for another power supply. Now to take this out, you just pull this thing here, pull this up like that, slide it out, and if we look at the rating on this thing, you'll see it's a bit of a whopper. So, what we got? Um, where is it? 930 watts. Yeah, it's a bit on the insane side, to be honest. Uh, we're hitting 77 amps. That's insane on the 12 volt rail. Well, and that's a single 12 volt roll rail. Um, I presume that's just for when you're starting out the hard drives because they'll take so much power. I mean, this thing takes eight hard drives and they can be 15k SAS drives. They get hot and they use a lot of power. So that's going to be probably why that's there. Um, now, people have said that this server is quieter if you have two power supplies installed. Um, I don't actually have any money to buy a second power supply at the moment, seeing as I'm actually trying to get the CPUs and stuff first, because that's actually more useful. Ah, go in. Is that in? Yes, that's in. Okay. Um, you can put feet on this thing, but I don't really see the point yet. Oh my god. This thing's like 35 kilograms or something. So it's hardly surprising it's hard to move. But yeah, I think that's a pretty reasonable tour of it. Um, just some other little things. There's a ATI... Can I get close enough to see it? There we go. That's a ES1000 if you can't read that. Um, it's just a little ATI video card, it's got 16 megs of RAM on it. Uh, CMOS battery. It's there. Oh god, straps getting caught on everything. Uh, 12 dim slots. Um, these two here, these are quite interesting. These are for, uh, um, I think it's a DRAC5 it's called. It's a uh, remote access card for Dell servers. So basically it allows you to administrate it um, like externally pretty much without having to do like a remote desktop or something which is a very useful feature. Um, we've got a floppy drive which is a bit on the old side. <laughs> we have our IDE IDE um, Oh dear, let me just turn this up. Oh, I'm not going to do this one handed, one second. Ugh. 
Oh, there me. Right. It's better. Let's just move this lamp so we can actually see. So we've got the Dell kind of weird LCD management thing here. So when you plug in this to the mains, it will light up and basically show you like any error codes or anything. Uh, power button, reset switch, and this just turns on the light. I'm not really very sure what that's for. Um, two more USBs. A uh, VGA port in the front, which is just it's basically just connected to the one at the back, so it allows you to do stuff easily when you're trying to manage this thing. We've got a standard DVD ROM drive and a compact disc. It's not a burner or anything. We've got that floppy drive that I said. Um, two blanking plates here. So these are not actually a hard drive. They're literally just, just like a blanking plate, pretty much. They're kind of useless, really. I'm not really sure why these are in the server. I'd rather just have eight trays, but okay. Um, it's a bit dusty, but if you look in there, you can see the see the SAS connectors at the back. So they also support SAS and SATA drives with no conversion. And I think that that is about it. Yep. Seems that you're ring. So yep, that's the server I bought. Almost set up any CPU in or RAM. So it doesn't really do much at the moment, but I'm nearly there. I just need to get hard drive and CPUs and RAM. And then it'll work. And I'll be so happy because I'll finally have my server. And yep, yeah, it's a whole lot better than the current server, which I'll now show you.